Hi, my name is Jimmy. I'm a senior medical student here at the University of Alberta. I'm here with Dr. Sabine Bojo, a fourth year cardiac surgery resident at the Mazakowski Heart Institute, Edmonton. This is a four part series on surgical techniques that medical students should know before the surgery rotation. This video will cover common suturing techniques used in the operating room. In our next videos, Jimmy will cover knot tying techniques, practice tips, and common mistakes to avoid in the operating room. Okay, so the first thing we're going to talk about is how to hold a forcep properly. And so when you want, when you're picking up your forcep, you want to hold it between your thumb and middle fingers, and that's going to control the opening and closing of the forcep. And your index finger is going to sit on the top and provide a little bit of stability there so you can rotate the needle properly and, and, and grab uh, whatever surface you're trying to grab. Your ring and pinky fingers are going to be planted on the surface of, your, of where you're operating and that's going to give you stability while you're controlling what you're trying to with the forcep. These are uh, flat uh, forceps, uh, this is a debakey, so this is good for just general uh, suturing techniques. Uh, you don't want to use uh, this flat surface when you're suturing or grabbing skin. So you want to use a pointed tip and that prevents a crush injury on the skin. Okay, so the next thing we're going to discuss is how to hold a needle driver. So all needle drivers are, are pretty much the same designs. They have two rings meant for your fingers. So the, the traditional method of, of holding a needle driver is to have your ring finger in, in the bottom uh, loop and then your thumb in the top loop. So when you're going to, to hold it, it sort of looks like, like that. Now there's a few different variations. So that's one end of the spectrum where you have both your thumb and ring finger in the loops. The other end of the spectrum is something called palming the needle driver. So you hold uh, the needle driver with none of your fingers inside the loops and you open and close it by using your, uh, uh, the, the bottom part of your thumb here pressing against the needle driver. Doing it this way you get a little bit better uh, pronation and supination when you're taking your, uh, your bite which we'll, we'll demonstrate later. A few of the, the sort of in-between methods of, of holding the needle driver uh, would be to have your thumb in the top loop and your ring finger out of the bottom loop and that sort of gives you a little bit more control to open and close the needle driver and still gives you a bit more pronation supination than having both fingers in the loops. The last method would be having the ring finger in the bottom and your thumb out of the loop and it's a similar benefit as, as previously so it's a little bit easier to open and close the needle driver and you still have a bit more supination and pronation than having both fingers in, in both loops. Okay, so the next thing we're going to discuss is how to load a needle. When you're loading a needle into your needle driver, you always want to use your forcep to grab the needle. And for uh, a most basic suturing, uh, you want to load the needle about two-thirds back from the, the tip. So one-third back from what we call the, the heel, uh, which is where the, the suture actually comes out. And you want to try and angle that needle a little bit outwards. So it looks like, sits like that on the needle driver. Once you have your needle loaded in your needle driver, you're gonna take your bite. And uh, once you're done taking your bite and, and you want to return the needle back to your uh, assistant or your scrub nurse, you always wanna protect the needle so that someone doesn't get poked with this exposed uh, needle point. And the way to do that is to rotate this back so the needle is touching the shaft of your needle driver. And you do that with your forcep. So now uh, there's no way that this needle is going to poke someone inadvertently. So next we'll be discussing how to hold the scissors and uh, how to cut using them. So we'll just demonstrate with the medicine balm, but when you're, when you're going to, in to cut a uh, suture material, you want to have this little screw pointing upwards. And with the medicine balm, it's easy because the screw is always on the top where the, the tips are pointing upwards. You don't want to go in and cut something like this with this uh, bolt on the bottom. So this always wants to be on the top, okay? And in terms of, of holding with uh, the correct pressure, you want to push the blades together. And the best way to do that is to push up with your thumb, so like that, and in with your ring fingers. And that forces the blades together to allow a, a nice even cut. So finally, we'll demonstrate uh, when, when going in to cut a piece of suture, you always want to enter in with the blades closed and this prevents you from cutting something inadvertently while you're traveling into the chest for example uh, to cut the suture. Once you're close to the suture that you want to cut you want to open those blades, you're going to engage the suture, cut, release 
and pull away. Now the reason for the release after you cut is sometimes the suture material may not cut completely and you don't want to pull and, and rip an anastomosis, for example, before uh, you, you've released that suture material. So the first uh, suturing technique we're going to describe is the simple interrupted suture. So as we discussed earlier, you want to load the needle uh, about two-thirds back from the tip and uh, angled a little bit outwards. When you're taking your, your bite, you want to enter the tissue at a 90 degree angle with the needle. So you want to enter just like that and you want to hold the, the, uh, the part of the skin that you're trying to enter with the uh, pointed uh, forceps. So you enter the skin and it's always best when you're learning how to suture to take it in two bites so you enter on one half and you can see there that I've entered at 90 degrees and the key here is on the other side you want to ensure that you have the same length on each side from the incision. So pull the needle partially through, reload the needle and you want to enter at the same depth and have the same distance on the other side uh, when you're exiting the skin. And so what you can see here is that this distance is roughly equivalent to this distance. And that's what you're aiming for with a simple interrupted suture. The next thing we're going to describe is how to do an instrument tie. So for the instrument tie, you wanna pull the needle end of the suture through your uh, incision and leave a short tail on the other end. You're gonna take your needle driver and make two loops around the driver and then grab the short end and pull in the opposite direction. And you want to pull that until that knot is tight against the skin. The next bite, you're going to take one more loop again with the needle driver, grab that short end, and again pulling in the opposite direction. You want to make at least three knots in total. Okay, so the next technique we're going to demonstrate is a simple running suture. So I've started off here by placing a simple interrupted suture and doing an instrument tie at the apex of the incision. And the principle of the simple running suture is the same as a simple interrupted, it's just without having to cut those sutures after every bite. So you want to have an equal distance between bites as we discussed previously. and you want to reload that needle uh, in the operating field. So you take your bite and you pull the suture through and the spacing you want to try and have equal spacing uh, with every bite. And what you'll end up with is a uh, evenly spaced uh, sutures with this sort of uh, running uh, suture running over top the incision. So the next suturing technique that we'll be discussing is the subcuticular. Uh, the subcuticular suture is a completely contained suture within the dermis and subcuticular layer. So when the incision is closed, uh, all components of the suture are left underneath the, the skin, including the knot. Uh, and this is what uh, you want to use when you're closing skin uh, from a surgical incision and it, it leaves the uh, skin without any suture running over the top. Uh, so to start it, you have to take your uh, suture material and you want to place a knot in the dermis layer, uh, completely burying that knot. So you take a simple uh, bite. So what I've done here is placed my knot in the dermis layer, so it's beneath the epidermis or the skin, uh, and you can do either an instrument tie or a hand tie to tie that knot. Uh, the next step is you want to start closing this incision from the apex. So you've placed your knot buried here in the dermis and you want to then take a bite and exit of that dermis layer at the apex of the incision. And pull that needle through. So now you can see that the suture is right at the apex, right underneath the 
uh, epidermis and you can start suturing uh, this incision close. So the bites are contained just below the epidermis in this dermal layer. So that's the start of the uh, the closure there, and the as you can see, the bites that I'm taking are horizontal as opposed to vertical. And if you want to try and uh, uh, space them out equally, you can place your previous bites suture across the other side of the incision, so you know where to enter with your needle for the next bite, and that will ensure that you're placing the sutures evenly. So we've almost completely closed the incision here. I'm just gonna demonstrate a couple more bites. The, the end of the incision, as you can see, is right there. So a couple more bites to take us right to the apex. So we've decided that we're gonna tie our, our knot here and we're gonna do uh, an Aberdeen knot and this will allow us to bury that knot once we're done. So, so what you do is you have the loop here. You wanna place the suturing end through and pull on the loop to tighten that through. And you can see how the incision then bunches up and, and where you've closed it. You wanna place at least three knots in there. And the very last one, you wanna pull the needle through the loop as well. And that completes the knot. Now in order to keep the knot underneath the skin, you have to bury it. So to bury the knot, you simply reload your suture, enter your incision behind the knot, and come out deep at the apex. And pull the needle through, and then you cut the suture at the skin level and that then buries the knot and you have a completed subcuticular closure there. The next uh, technique we're going to be demonstrating is how to secure a drain. This is a technique that you can use for a chest tube or a JP drain in, uh, in general surgery. So you can see here is we have our, our drain entering a, a puncture incision here in the skin. And so anytime you put a drain in you're going to have to use a suture to secure it. Otherwise you can see it's going to be very easy for that drain to fall out. Uh, so what you want to do is you take a simple interrupted bite. So a simple interrupted bite here near the top of the drain. And for this knot I'm going to use a hand tie. You want to make sure when you're tying you have enough ends uh, length on both ends so that you can tie this around the drain as well. So three or four knots around there. So once you have your knot uh, at the top of the incision, you want to wrap this around the drain. And you're gonna do this several times and tie a knot around the drain as well. So again, two, three or four knots there. And I usually wrap this around twice just to make sure it's, uh, it's secure around the drain. Cut and now that drain is totally secure inside the skin.